so it is february the 14th um and bryce and i um we both are hysterical worst girlfriends wives ever mm -hmm. because we both forgot it was valentine's day <laughs> even though it's one of my best friend's birthdays um so we thought we'd jump on and do a little impromptu little twenty one of our coffee chats about love and what is love because there's so much banded about, isn't there, Bryce, about yeah. getting to the love vibration and stay in love and stay in that sort of heart space, et cetera. But a lot of people band these things around. And I would say um, it's really important that we all look at how we're embodying them. Yeah. And I don't think we actually truly understand what love is. Um, I know somebody said once, my mother said this once, I think she'd heard somebody say that the only true Valentine's you'll ever have are your children because they're super, that's a, a super unconditional type of love. And um, I know we've been talking about that a lot in the Magdalene series uh, that I've been doing on my channel. And um, I remember when I was going through my trauma therapy after coming out of an abusive relationship, something that really hit me. And I think that that girls as women were, I'm not generalizing, but I kind of am generalizing that we, we are all kind of guilty of having this misunderstanding of what passion is when it comes to romantic relationships. You know, a lot of times when there's um, a lot of drama, we think that it is passion, but it's not, it's toxicity, you know? And, um, and that's not what love is. Love is not toxic. Love, um, there actually is a verse in the Bible, and I, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians here in a minute, but I know in the book of John, there's a, a verse in the Bible, and I'm paraphrasing, where he says that God, where, where there is fear, there is no, there is no love, and God yeah. is love. And so if you're in a situation with someone where there's a fear response, that's not love. You know, that's not love. And I guess I'll go ahead. I know most people know this Bible verse. It's one of the most commonly read at weddings. It's 1 Corinthians 13. Um, four through uh, six, I'm going to read here and I'm sorry, four through seven. And to me, even though we know the Bible is corrupt and has been um, manipulated over time, this to me is one of the most powerful passages of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And that to me is, a very, there's a very calm undertone to that, you know? And I think that that's the essence of love, whether it's a romantic relationship or a parent-child relationship or a relationship with your animals, you know? There's a calmness, even though emotions might, might roll up from time to time, there's always this sense of calmness it, uh, calmness, it does not delight in evil. It does not, you know, true love does not want to see, if someone truly loves you, they don't want to see you suffer. They don't want to see you fail. They want what's best for you without being self-seeking. And I think that that's true across the board for, again, for friendships, family members, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. It's that true essence of really, really caring about that person's well-being. That's so important. And I love that. I mean, I think that and there's so many points there I want to sort of come back to because, you know, we talk about how you can't truly be feeling love or demonstrating love or be in the love vibration if you're in the fear. The two, you can't be in both at the same time. And look at what's happened over not just the last two years. I think the last two years have brought it to light. But so many relationships, whether it's friends, whether it's family, whether it's work, whether it's romantic, they use fear as a form of manipulation. Mm -hmm. And we've even seen it a lot in a lot of, you know, people that genuinely fit are coming from the right place. But look how much and so much of the videos that we watch on, on both sides, whether it's on the truth or the mainstream, so much is driven by fear. And that is not in the love vibration. And one of the things I see happen an awful lot is you can see a lot of people who are think that they're spiritually awakened and they can say the words but not demonstrate it from the actions and i'm a really really strong believer in you walk the talk you know you can't it's no good just saying it's like when someone says with respect and then you know they're going to say something rude to you that's not remotely respectful or not coming from a place of love 
Yeah. Well, and that comes from also the, the biggest thing I think to be in that heart vibration is understanding self-love. And I'm not talking about narcissism. I'm not talking about the ego. I'm talking about valuing yourself, being your own best friend. Because I think when we learn to do that as a human species, then we will only, we'll be able to put up boundaries and only allow people in our lives that carry that same essence of, of the true love too, if that makes sense. Like, you know, they say that for people that have repeated pr problems in their lives, it's because there's something in them that they haven't healed. And so they're seeking out another opportunity to heal that. So once we learn how to heal the part of us, that's not loving ourselves, I think we will be able to walk into, and, you know, fear comes from, I see this a lot in my breakdown um, of religious cults and all that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, you look at here in the United States, we have the Westboro Baptist church, which I can't say too much about them guys, but you can Google them if you don't know who they are. And they're constantly um, parading around propaganda, trying to scare people into coming into their church. And that's just not God. But my thing is like, are they doing that because they're afraid that they're not right? And so they're going to project that onto other people, which again is not coming from a place of trust and a place of love. Um, I, you know, I, I was speaking with our friend Shanti this morning and one of my favorite Bible verses, she was saying, this is one of hers is a verse that says, be still and know that I'm God and being mm -hmm. able to surrender. And I think that's a part of love too. Just being able, how many people do we know in the spiritual world that are always talking about trust the universe, trust the universe, trust the universe, but then they act in a behavior that's not trusting of the universe. Absolutely. And I think this is really, I mean, I had, I think, I know, because I was speaking to Bryce about it on Friday, I went to um, a remembrance service with one of my friends that, that died very suddenly. And it was the most beautiful, beautiful service on every level. The vicar was absolutely amazing. His widow was absolutely amazing, his family. And it, it just really, you know, times like that really hit home in terms of what's important, what relationship. And I could look around that room and that there are people that I hadn't seen for quite a long while. And it was really clear to me which ones we interacted with each other from a place of pure, genuine love. And it really made me think about the community that we've been interacting with and building on the online community. And yes, there's, there's, there's so much that's said that isn't necessarily follow through with actions. And, and this, I'm not saying this from a blame or who's she talking about sort of things. I was thinking, you know, sometimes you've just got to be really honest with yourself and sort of saying, what am I putting out there as well? Why am I um, attracting certain people into my lives that aren't necessarily reciprocating with the love vibration? Because if I was really approaching them with a the love vibration, they'd have no choice but to come back with that. Right. So when I'm saying this, I'm not saying it from, I'm saying it from a self-reflection -re point of view. And what you just said then, that Bible verse, and uh, um, what we were talking about, about how love is calm and it doesn't hold grudges. And for me, what I found is my most lasting friendships and the ones that I really value from a place of love are also the ones where you can have those difficult decision discussions with people because whatever the message, if it's coming from the right place, then it's received in the right way, is my experience. Well, it kind of goes back to things that we were talking about with Lucy um, last week about being able, you know, if you really love somebody, when they come to you with a grievance or something's wrong, it could have just been a miscommunication, you have the ears to listen, to understand yeah. what they're saying. And therefore, there's that 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 patience that kindness that is coming through and it's interesting you know we talk about people in like the spiritual community especially talking about you know the love vibration but they're not acting on it you know every, everybody knows that my my day job is is teaching um a traditional yoga but i don't treat teach daily anymore basically all i do is teach courses now and part of the courses are a huge deep dive into the philosophy and mm -hmm. philosophy is something that i Ha ha ha. I guess everyone knows that's what I love the most. But um, but we have this kind of saying that the teacher always teaches what the teacher needs to learn. Yes. And I don't think a lot of people in the spiritual community that are, you know, saying words but not acting the actions have comprehended that what they're saying is what they actually need to learn. And if we all had that self-love 
which part of that self-love is self-reflection is being able to look at yourself and course correct because you love yourself and you want to be the best you that you can be not just for the world, but for yourself and your own purpose. You know, so if we start really looking at practicing that self-love, then we'll pick up, I think on those cues of, Oh, I'm talking about this a lot because I need to look at this. Absolutely. I understand this, you know, and that accountability, it all starts with that, that personal accountability. Oh, just so important. And it is always, and it's one of the reasons why I love my job so much. And I've got various different strings to my bow, like you, is because I'm not going to be working with, with clients if I'm not doing it myself. So the best way to hold myself accountable is to be talking about this stuff because it's a constant reminder in a busy world about the importance space. So I have just got off a call with the most amazing lady. I'm not going to give away any confidentiality. I'm just going to say, hi, J uh, Jody. we'll send you so much love. And this lady is absolutely amazing what she's doing um, for herself and her animals. And it, it's just beautiful to see these people that really are sort of walking the talk. And one of the things that I posted on my community page on YouTube today was one of the Joe Dispenser recent interviews. And it's not that I'm always going on about Joe Dispenser. It's just, the, well, I am. <laughs> but it's just, he's a really good example. I think he explains things so eloquently. And we've all been talking about, myself included, so this is always me talking, <laughs> you know, holding myself accountable, <laughs> about creating the world we want to move forward we talk about the age of aquarius we talk about moving into 5d um but equally we've talked a lot you and i and with other guests that we've had about how we get that balance of knowledge and understanding our past and what perhaps has been hidden from the past and how we balance that with creating and one of the things he said that just hit me so hard this morning was that, you know, this, this science, the quantum science that people like Joe Dispenser are doing have actually proven that the collective networks of observers determine reality. And, oh, my God, it's so potent because I've been trying to sort of articulate where I wanted to go with the talks and the guests that I've had on, on my channel, and that sums it up because I want to be mainly focusing if I'm looking back, I want it to be in a way that's constructive for helping shape how I move forward, because I am 100% convinced from the work that I've done over the last 15, 20 years, that our observation, our thoughts and our actions absolutely shape our reality. Oh, for sure they do. For sure they do. I abs that's, that's the whole um, magic of, of how we are as human beings, as I've said with like we've said, I, I want to look to the future because when you go through all the stuff in the past and you start asking why, why, why did they do that? You're like, oh, because we're there's something special about us. There's something special, and so I think we do have that power of of a collective. It's almost like a collective group meditation, but but yeah. not in an not in an active state where if we all start to focus on really that into that heart vibration, what that really needs, then um, it's destined to change the template in which we live our, our lives all over the world, uh, for sure. You know, and, um, it's, it's, you know, it's funny as, as you're talking to, when you're talking about your friend that passed away, I keep thinking about like, when we are on our deathbeds, like when people ask you, when you're on your deathbed, like what's going to be important to you. And my aunt, um, my mom's sister passed away. I think she was 42 when she passed away. This was over like, or maybe actually 20 years ago. Um, and she passed away of cancer and at that time she had two children. My cousin, I believe my male cousin was 13 and my female cousin was eight. So very young. And when she was on her deathbed, like right before she passed away, my mom and her sisters were in there and they kept asking her like, Mary Jo, what can we do? What can we do? And all she kept saying was make sure you help Bill with the kids, make sure her husband, make sure you help Bill with the kids. And that sense of selfless love in this moment of her being in that much pain, but wanting to make sure everything was going to be okay. Yeah. And I think if we, to start off, if we think about that, like we don't know when our last day is going to be on this no. earth. None of us know. And so living each day in that place of like, what is, if I were to go away, if I were to exit the world today, like who do I want around me? Exactly. Who, do I want people to be mad at me or do I want to hold a grudge against somebody else that I actually care about? You know, why not, you know, contact? I, I've been watching a lot of other people talk about this, like when miscommunication happens, like why not just make that contact with that person? Mm -hmm. If you keep thinking about it, contact them, 
figure it out because we don't know when our last day is. We don't know when we're going to get a second chance to correct something and to go back to that vibration of love. And it's so important. Um, a couple of things that you said there that, that one, make that contact, be the bigger person, make the contact. Because the thing is, however it goes, that contact is meant to be, and it will give you a very good reflection of where that person is at and therefore whether they're right to be in your life or not. But when you take that first step and lead and initiate that, you're truly opening up your doors, your heart, etc., to for like you said, to really listen. And what we're not responsible for is how that's received, which is, you know, I think really, really important. And and not to beat yourself up, you know, hopefully it would be received well, but if it's not going to be received well, then that's obviously meant to be. And it's much better knowing than second guessing everything in your head. Yeah. And the other thing that you were saying there is about the meditation. Now I've been meditating for a long while, but like everything, I do have good periods and bad periods where sometimes I'm far more dedicated in my practice of medication than others. And what is blatantly apparent is when I'm really dedicated to it, everything in my life shifts. So one of the things I wanted to put out there to our listeners today, completely voluntary, I'm not going to be leading any guided meditations because for me, everyone has their own personal style about what resonates with them right here, right now. So sometimes I might like to do silent meditation. Sometimes I like to do walking. Sometimes I like listening to a certain person and style of guided meditations. And that's very unique to individuals. And that will change over time, depending on what you resonate with then. But I am publicly committing to doing sort of two, at least an hour of meditation a day. Sometimes it will be a block of an hour. Sometimes it will be two half hours. And I'm going to be telling you in our coffee chats how that's changing things for me. And I would really like to encourage anyone who's listened to that, if there's even a little bit of you that thinks, yes, I'm going to give it a go, give it a go. I'm happy for you to contact me. And if you want us to talk more about that and some tips and things, we can. Yeah. Um, but I just think if we all step into this consistency, why don't we see what we can all create together over the next moving forward. I love that. And I want to say too, like with meditation, because I think that's fantastic because it is. And I agree with you, like when I am, and I have to be consistent for the most part in order for me to keep my authorization to keep teaching. But the form of meditation that I practice is called the Tristana method. And it comes through active meditation, um, which I won't get too much into that here, but there's so many different forms of meditation guys. So, so I know a lot of people are very like, uh, sometimes get like put off by just sitting in silence. No, there's so many different types. Like you talked about the walking meditation there. The Tristana method that I do is active meditation. So yes. breath gaze point and a uh, posture. So my eyes aren't closed. They're focused on a gaze point and that comes through my practice. And that is the active meditation. And I, it's so funny because I was telling our friend Shanti this morning, a little while back, um, while I was practicing and when I practice, I don't listen to anything. I it's no, and I'm a huge music lover, but it's, I don't put anything on that what can potentially distract me, um, from what I'm really feeling. And, but I was practicing and I got this, like this voice that talks to me from time to time said, this is your magic weapon. This exactly. is what's going to liberate you. Keep doing this. This is why I sent you to India. This is, this is your saving grace. And that, that liberation is also that heart vibration where we're not, you know, we, we talk a lot about the ego and pride and there's a cheesy quote, ego is edging God out. Well, the ego is the false illusion of the self. So when the ego is too big, then you're not even in touch with who you really are. And sometimes yeah. living in that love, you do have to swallow that pride and humble yourself and be vulnerable. And meditation can show you that can show you where there's vulnerabilities. And once you can fall into that, lean into that vulnerability, you become more human. You yeah. become more, more in that, that vibration of love, of kind love, of, of being patient, of being kind, you know, of persevering. And so I do, I think that's fantastic, Catherine, that we could start. A, I wonder if we could actually, you know, some yoga shalas and other will do like challenge boards. Yeah, I think you and I, let's have a chat about this and see, and people can let us know what resonates with them. Because for me, I find it really helpful to like my husband and I will sort of say, right, we're going to do this together because when for me, I like being accountable to someone. And once I've verbalized it, then I'm the top person. If I say I'm going to do it, I'll do it. But everyone's different. But I just, it's just something I've been thinking about so much over the last couple of months, really, 
is like when we start putting our energy, our focus, attention on what we do want. And I'm absolutely not saying do your research. I'm not saying have fun conversations exploring in the past. I'm not saying that at all. It's not a one or the other. Yeah. I'm just saying that when we so talk about we want certain things to happen, well, there's so much science behind it for those of you that like to know how, the how it works on a quantum physics level. There's so much stuff that you can look at. But I know from personal experience, it literally is transformable. And it's something everyone can do. It costs you nothing. It can fit in with any other lifestyle. And you can literally explore different techniques and see what works for you. As I said, I mix it up a lot, depending on what resonates with me in that at that time. And sometimes I like to listen to guided meditation. Sometimes I like complete silence. I do lo- I love the breathing ones as well. I love doing it with my horses and my dogs and my cats. There's so many different times. But I would just, wouldn't it be special if as many people who watch this could comment whether they're up for it and joining in with us. And then when we do our coffee chats each week, or if we do extra spontaneous ones like this, we can follow up and see how people are finding it and what, what changes they're noticing in their lives. Cause I guarantee you will do. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You will. Absolutely. The first time I ever started doing meditation, I remember um, all of a sudden I had never felt a pause before mm. there. You can take a pause. That's allowed. You know, in the busy Western world that a lot of us live in, where it's go, 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 work, 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 you can take a pause and that pause will show you a lot. And so I think that's fantastic, Catherine. I think we should, I hope everybody listening wants to do that because I think that could really shift things. Yeah, let us know. And if you'd like some sort of help at all, let us know, because I think we're both very open to, and we've also between us got an amazing network of um friends a lot of people that you've already spoken to that we can get in on this challenge as well but initially I'm saying that you know as of depending what time zone you're in today or tomorrow and and when I say now that's an indication me I don't sit there and set my watch sort of thing it's just like what I'm saying is I'm going to dedicate a certain amount of time to it and I'm not going to skimp on it and that is a non-negotiable in my diary and the thing is I mean um Jojo Spence got a new love one out that that I just really love and the effect Bryce that it had on my dogs and cats when we played it with them was absolutely profound what it brought up to them emotionally and that one and there's a really beautiful one by Wayne Dyer that you can get three different versions all over YouTube called I am that I am and I think I've mentioned this before but when I play that my dogs howl like wolves but not howling like wolves I must get it on video sometime but obviously I'm concentrated to relax into it not howling in a distress way at all howling in a pure vibration connection way it's yeah. beautiful to say yeah well I'm excited I'm so I think that would I think that's such a great idea Catherine and I think that's what a great day to kick it off with on Valentine's Day too you know this was actually my due date today guys I was actually due on Valentine's Day oh were you (laughs) oh today's early I was like no I'm not sharing my birthday with a holiday (laughs) so um but yeah my best friend Jane happy birthday Jane my best friend Jane from university we were always so jealous because her birthday is on Valentine's Day And so when you're at university, like you used to get your post delivered to little pigeonholes in the main reception area. And so, of course, on Valentine's Day, her cubbyhole was full. And so it looked like she had most of Mara's and she didn't, you know, of course, no one knew it was her birthday. She was like... My Valentine's card. <laughs> it was weird. It was a girl. <laughs> it's been a standard joke ever since about what a cool time to have birthday. So yeah. yeah. So, but no, it's just lovely to take this time to reflect, isn't it? And take this time to reflect for ourselves and for others, and about sort of okay, where now? What next? And um, we'd love to hear everyone's comments about what they think and where they're at and how what love means to you. Yeah and there's also guys it just popped into my head there is and i'm not trained in this i've just seen it on youtube there's a there's a laughing meditation too you can google it where you make yourself laugh and you keep yourself laughing for a good five it's a short meditation five oh ten God. minutes and what it does to change people's day just to take that time just to laugh so that's, that's another meditation. beautiful i've not seen that and that, that is one i haven't tried so i will definitely be trying that yeah absolutely fantastic so 
rest of the day have you got anything else planned for valentine's oh no, i think no i totally forgot it was you know <laughs> i never i never i mean i think the last time i exchanged a valentine's day gift was with my best friend who um who's gay and i got him a chocolate man boyfriend and then he gave me something too but that was like the last time i actually did anything for valentine's day so um so you know um but you know it's 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 it, i know some people really really love it so i hope for those that are really love this holiday i think it's i actually it does my heart it makes my heart happy when i see people who really love it because it means they really love love and they exactly love they love. and that's that's a really you know that's a really great quality to have if you're a person that really loves love and wants to be in that 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 state of, of loving someone and being loved by and that's a hard to thing too is to love someone but also allow yourself to be loved by another person that's something a lot of people struggle with but again it goes back to that self-love as well so really does and i would just say you know big message to all of us we don't need to wait we everyone knows this so and valentine's day is a bit of fun for a lot of people but also is sometimes these are sort of good reminders for us to sort of say, right, we don't need anyone to tell us that this is the day you show your love. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if, if everyone started showing their love and really working out for themselves, how they know when they're really communicating from a heart space with themselves and everything else around them, then I think we'd see shifts happening really, really quickly all around us. Yeah, me too. And I just had thought too, like what would happen if every time you thought about someone, a friend or whatever, you just shot them a text and said, Hey, thinking about you, hope you're well, you know, how would that change our world? If every time, every single one of us thought about someone and just said, Hey, just a shoot quick text, thinking about you, hope all is well. If that happened repeatedly throughout the day all over the world, how would that change our vibration? How would that change that giving and receiving of love? Not, and again, we're not just talking about romantic relationships. We're talking about, I'm mainly talking about friendships when it comes to exactly. that. You know? um, so, so yeah, it's the power is ours. It's, um, it's always, an, it's, uh, it's like that uh, Wizard of Oz, you know, you, you, you had the power all along. You have the power, it you've had did. it all along. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's so many scary things out there. I think, you know, we've already talked about, we can't be in a fear vibration, a love a vibration, but the beauty is noticing when you're slipping from one to another and then making a conscious effort to do something about it. So it's fine. You know, we don't want to suppress our emotions, but we can consciously choose where we spend most of our time. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Oh, well, I love you lots, Bryce. I love and you too. <laughs> I love all the listeners. And, you know, we are sending you all a lot of love. We really, really appreciate you. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you're going to join in our meditation in whatever form that looks like for you, sort of next month challenge. And if you do, let's keep in contact with each other and see how you're finding it and what's shifting and see how it shifts things globally as well. Amazing. Bravo to you, Catherine, for coming up with this. So oh, amazing. <laughs> my halo's gone wonky. Hang on. <laughs> and we will be back. We will be, you and I will be back tomorrow evening. We're, we're tomorrow um, at various different time sales with with lovely Bryce, with David Cohen and lovely Medina. So we will, I'm sure we'll be carrying on the conversation then. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Bye Bryce. Guys. Bye.